Hey guys, this is Musings of Maverick, I'm Maverick, and today we're going to be looking at Bunny Girl Senpai Episode 6. So, last episode where we left off, uh, Tomoe got into, the new girl Tomoe got into a kind of fake relationship with our main protagonist, Sakuda, uh, due to trying to avoid getting hit on by the jock that her friend likes. And she doesn't want to deal with this situation, so she decided to get into a fake relationship. However, that jock decided to spread some rumors about her. Sakuda was having none of it, and he kicked his ass. And now it seems that Tomoe is really falling for our main character. And that about sums it up. So, in this episode, well, let's see what happens next. Like, what is the relationship going to become between Tomoe and Sakuda? And more importantly, what's going to happen with Mai? and whether Mai and Tomoe are going to have any interactions. So anyways, without further ado, let us head into the episode. In 3, 2, 1, play. Oh. Well, this is a small world. And they're just gonna ignore each other? Really? Hey. Oh, already opening? Alright, see you guys in a sec. July 10th. So it's progressing rather fast, this anime. Really? Yokohama. <laughs> like, what is the relationship between these two? It's so ambiguous. What? <laughs> I think that's kind of impossible. Ah, carrot. Funny girl. All right. Oh, she was there? Ah, oh, she je she's jealous. But isn't it like one or two weeks after that incident? <laughs> How is this situation going to resolve itself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What is this weird relationship? Really? Really? Well, oh, that's logical. <laughs> and another two weeks. Oh, I miss summer break. She's gonna confess to him on the last day, isn't she? Somehow I think this is not going to go as planned. <laughs> yeah, how is he going to... I'm oh, sorry, he's going to keep the shirt on? Well, that's surprisingly conservative. This is just like any ordinary thing. Like <laughs> Oh, I get it because she was sitting there. Say goodbye, but Wow, that was a surprisingly wholesome ending. What? Okay. Wait. Don't tell me it's... Oh! Because she doesn't want it to end. So they're going... Ah, uh, I, I knew it! It couldn't have been that simple. Round.
What? Wait, is she lying? But the last time, Well, that is surprisingly accurate, though. And hey, the animation studio can just save on some budget and reuse the same scenes. So maybe Sakuta is, he thinks, or if Tomoe is really lying, and Sakuta really thinks that, so he's just playing along for now, and waiting until Tomoe says it herself? <sighs> See, this is what I like about this kind of main characters. They're not some dense, <laughs> dense MFs. You know, that's funny because can we also? has Futaba, who likes him. See, Sakura actually knows that Tomoe likes him. Hmm. <laughs> and the <laughs> smooth bam.
Oh, only three weeks? Fights for justice? But I reject. Aww. Okay, so it's the next day now? Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, what? What?
nice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being so cheeky. <laughs> yes. You made me. But did he and Tomoe go on a date? Oh, and she made new friends. Yeah, I have the same question. Quantum and Kimiwa? Really? Dude, enough with the pseudoscience. My god. Alright, whatever you say. They kicked each other's butt? <laughs> character wait this girl <laughs> show What? And that was episode 6 of Bunny Girl Senpai. Wow. Okay, first off, before I say anything else, that was probably my favorite episode of this series right now. And that one was, even though, if you think about it, nothing really happened because it was all just a simulation. Uh, I, I love the way that they handled this episode. So, okay, so jumping right in, I'm not going to go over like the details of today. It doesn't really matter anyways. Uh, one thing that I was very surprised by is, you know, for a show that's based on such a ridiculous premise and is centered around some quite ridiculous adolescence problems, if you think about it, it handled this situation very mature. A lot more mature than most other romance dramas or romance comedies out there. So, what do I mean by this? Well, you know, when I say it's absurd teenage problems, it's because that's the whole, you know, that's the whole gist of the situation, right? Even their problems themselves, this supernatural phenomenon, is called 
of the Hosen's syndrome. Because really, it's just a bunch of stuff that, you know, teenagers or adults and young adults would care about. I mentioned this in my review of last episode, but if we think back to it, you know, our main character and his sister, they got hurt because of, you know, words, rumors, basically. And that's something that uh, maybe if you don't know, uh, how, how can I say it better? If you don't know uh, your, your role or your identity in society, in this world, then you are more easily swayed by these, you know, external factors or external voices. So that's something that happens a lot during adolescence period, during teenage periods. But typically when you're an, uh, at least an adult, or maybe not even adult, maybe let's say college, right? Once you get into that territory, you should be more confident of yourself and you can ignore these kinds of things more easily. Uh, same thing with Mai. You know, her whole problem was that because she was somehow a late transfer student, so everybody ignores her and then she starts to disappear on her own. Like, that is completely ridiculous. Like, let's be honest. I been tra a transfer student so many times in my life, and I've seen so many transfer students that have come to my school. I've even transferred classes. Uh, if you don't know, I'm actually Asian, so here in Asia we have, it's not quite the same as in the Western schools where you, you basically change classes like every period. Here, the whole day, just like these Japanese anime, you're within the same class, and typically for all three years, there's very little change. But even then, I was dropping in and out of different schools, different people transferred in and transferred out. Nobody had this kind of problem. Like, it's... It's a huge exaggeration. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but this is hugely exaggerated. And the same thing for uh, this new girl, Tomoe, as well. Her whole problem is that she wants to fit in with her friends, and she she tries her hardest to you know, read the situation so as to not be ridiculed or shamed or feel out of the loop. But again, that is such a... In, in, that, in that context of a middle school or high school, yeah, maybe it's, it's a huge thing, but in the whole picture, that's trivial. So a show about such trivial problems and making such a big situation out of them actually managed to handle a relationship problem very maturely. So, uh, how can I say it? You know, a lot of those generic harem animes or mangas out there, they all face the same problem. And first of all, let me preface this by saying that I actually like to watch harem anime and comedies or harem mangas, but one thing that really always gets on my nerves is if you're going to make a harem anime or manga, if you're gonna make a harem series, then freaking make it a true harem series. Like, you're just doing this, and even though the final girl was already decided long ago, you're trying to turn this into a multi-sided relationship for the pure sake of turning it into a multi-sided relationship. We all know who's going to end up with the main character, be it male or female, in the end. You're just adding unnecessary complications, and you're making us feel bad for all the other uh, suitors who came later from the main girl or main guy if you're you know a girl and looking at reverse harem situations and here it, like last episode I thought it was going to be turned into you know that kind of anime as well I thought they were going to have some kind of uh, well I didn't know I didn't really know what would happen but I thought that yeah it's gonna turn into a harem where we know that this main character, he has his mindset on Mai, but then he also has this Tomoe to care about, Tomoe likes him, I likes him as well, and then there's all these other girls that's gonna come in the future episodes, but in the end, he's gonna go and choose his one true love, Mai. So it seems that it's not going this route. Uh, you know, with Tomoe's situation, I'd say, it, so what, what, what was the ending there? So in the end, He's basically saying, okay, fine, harbor your feelings to towards me. Like, this is not something that you can control. However, 
and he's already prefacing this, you know, the one I like is mine. So you can have your feelings and you should accept your feelings, but I'm sorry, I can't accept it. But that doesn't mean that you should just never say it or lie to yourself because, you know, that's being, that's lying to yourself. And it's not going to change anything, but so just be honest, be truthful, accept the situation. Yeah, it sucks. Somebody's going to get hurt. You know, one-sided love is bound to have people who get hurt, but deal with it, basically. Um, so yeah, I thought that was handled really well, and it completely blew my expectations of how they, would, they were going to handle this episode, to be honest and handle this entire situation. So, in the end, and, you know, just on a side note, Tomoe, we can see that she's also changing herself as well. Like, uh, in the ending scenes, she's actually talking with these, this new group of girls who are not so, I guess, superficial, if you want to say it like that. Uh, so, she's really learned to how to be herself. You know, she, she enjoys this new her, not the old middle school her. She, we mentioned it last episode, she does enjoy this new her. It's just that even though it's this new her, she doesn't necessarily have to force herself to do things that she's, or conform to friends, right? <sighs> I guess in the end what I'm saying is Tomoe, you know, she's a much more likable character now. And actually I, I have to say, it, Purely from a looks perspective, I'm personally I might like her more than mine, but you know it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be. Um, Sakuda has his heart set on mine, and that's it. But that's not to say that there's not not any chemistry between him and Tamoe. I feel like there actually is, but that's what makes the entire situation so frustrating in the first place, right? And that's how a lot of rom romance comedies get. Uh, get out of hand, basically. Um, so, anyways, in the end, Tomoe might still harbor feelings for him, but, you know, maybe thinking to uh, assist from the sidelines or wait on the sidelines, and if, you know, Sakuda and Mai somehow don't work out, hey, maybe it's her turn to give it a try. Although, in the context of this anime, I doubt that will happen, right? Um, so, yeah, anyways, big clap, big clap for how they handled this situation. So, one minor thing to talk about before we face the elephant in the room is this, uh, you know, quantum entanglement theory now, that's, like, you know, I, I like that how one minute I praise this anime for being so mature in how they handle things, and the next... Immediately the next scene, they give us some pseudoscientific bullcrap. But I guess, you know, whatever. They're, they're just trying to make something out of the whole situation. So, for any of you guys who don't know, quantum entanglement basically is where two... Is it atoms or quantum particles? Just two particles. So, two particles can actually be entangled with each other, so that when, uh, uh, how do I say it? So they're paired, basically. These particles are paired. So when one thing, let's say there's two particles and each one uh, has to be the reverse of each other. So when one article, when you observe it, you see that it's A, then the other particle, no matter how far away it is, it's always going to be B. So that's basically what quantum entanglement is. And before anybody gets any ideas, no, this does not mean that you can do faster than light communication. I won't go into the details right now, but you know, this was something that I actually had a lot of interest in when when I was going through my uh, like sci-fi phase, I guess. I mean, I'm still a huge sci-fi nerd. I like to look up these kinds of things, you know, is faster than light transport or communication possible, blah blah blah. Quantum entanglement is something that always gets brought up in the context of faster than light communications, but no. So, so far as we know, it can't be used that way. So, anyways. Uh, oh, actually, a better analogy I thought of is, say you bought a pair of shoes, and then you, 
without you knowing, it was divided into two boxes, right? One pair of sh one shoe goes in one box, and the other shoe goes into the next. And then so you take one shoe, you leave it on Earth, and take the other shoe, and you go like billions of light years away. So then you open the box here on Earth, and you find out it's the right-sided shoe, and that would mean that the one that's ten that that's billions of light years away, the shoe in that box is a left shoe, left-footed shoe. So that's basically what happens. And uh, but anyways, I'm I'm going off on a tangent. So it's nothing to do with this. Ugh. It's whatever, right? So I, I'm just going to choose to ignore it from now on. It's it doesn't matter. But okay, so that aside, what's really interesting now is the new girl that showed up, Shoko, the one who I thought would have started it all, but now it seems that she's making her appearance early. So I think maybe. My theory is that, you know, this adolescence syndrome thingy is something that manifested itself from Shoko. At least that's how our main character, Sakuda, managed to get his adolescence syndrome or whatnot. Um uh, is it is it not? Is I might be completely wrong and Shoko is just just happened to be a character who arrived in Sakuda's life at the right time. But in any case, the thing I find really interesting about this is, you know how I just said I really loved how the anime portrayed, you know, sort of like a triangle relationship and how they maturely resolved the situation. Now, what's going to happen when your old crush comes back, right? Remember, he's now currently in a relationship with Mai, and he himself has said, and he's he's admitted that he had a, he was in love with Shoko so now what's gonna happen but again is that really Shoko though or is this the Shoko not exactly a Shoko that we know because if I remember correctly Shoko was a high school was in second year of high school when she met Sakuda and Sakuda was in third year of middle school at that time that means that there's a two age gap Right now, Sakuda is in his second year of high school, so theoretically, Shoko should have graduated by now. So, what's up with that? I don't know, but I am dying to find out. So, anyways, that concludes this episode's review. Um, like I said, I really liked how they handled the situation. Of course, you know, realistically speaking, it's probably not going to be such, uh, you know, sunshine and laughs. Uh, in reality, it, people are going to get hurt a lot more. There's probably going to be a lot more crying and whatnot. But, you know, it's anime. It's unrealistic. And at least it's a breath of fresh air. So, this is Mavery, and I'll see you guys next time.